Uh, welcome and this is the second exercise in which I want to take a particular paper and analyze the paper in great detail. So, the analysis is done again in terms of uh, content and clarity, but in addition I also want you to pay attention to the mechanics of how the paper is written. Of course, there is style and voice. But in this paper, in addition to style and voice, there are other things about the way the paper is constructed that is of very great interest and I would like you to pay attention to these aspects. So, what we are going to do is to take the paper, uh, try to read through, I will point out some aspects that you can uh, look at and then we will come back and do a small analysis on the paper. Okay. The paper is uh, from the work of uh, Crick and uh, Watson and uh, this is called the molecular structure of nucleic acids. Uh, basically, they are describing the structure of uh, DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid. It is uh, a one page uh, article, so it is it's slightly more than one page may be. Okay. Of course, it has a figure uh, which probably is familiar to all of you, uh, maybe you have seen in your basic uh, biology textbooks. But what I want you to do is to write down on a separate sheet the first sentences of each of these paragraphs. So, for example, the first sentence in the first paragraph says, we wish to suggest a structure for the salt of deoxyribose nucleic acid DNA and the first sentence in second paragraph for example, says a structure for nucleic acid has already been proposed by Pauling and Corey. So, similarly, I want you to actually write down the uh, first sentences of each of these uh, paragraphs. Okay. There are about probably 10, 12 paragraphs. So, we are going to uh, write down uh, each of those sentences. And uh, towards the end, where they give the acknowledgement, I also want you to pay attention to the second sentence. That sentence is here. First sentence is we are much indebted to Dr. Jerry Donohoe for constant advice and criticism, especially on interatomic distances. Uh, but I want you to pay attention to the second sentence. Second sentence says we have also been stimulated by a knowledge of the general nature of the unpublished experimental results and ideas of Dr. M. H. F. Wilkins, Dr. R. E. Franklin, and their co workers at King's College. London. Okay. So, this is another sentence I want you to pay attention to. We will come back and discuss uh, some of these sentences in the, uh, in the tutorial. Now, if you go through the first sentences, you can see that almost all the sentences are topical sentences. That is, each paragraph introduces whatever it is that will be discussed in that particular paragraph. So, somebody who is just reading the first sentences of each of the paragraphs, you know, if they are not interested in the details, can get a summary of whatever it is that Crick and Watson are trying to do. So, this is a very nice mechanism because people can then skip paragraphs, they can just read the first sentences and occasionally if the first sentence is not the topical sentence, uh, then the last sentence of the paragraph, if you can somehow make it the summarizing sentence then anybody who is reading the first and last sentences for example, can also still get the complete idea. So, so here are the first sentences of the uh, first five paragraphs and it says, so the first line says uh, what is it that they are trying to do and uh, second and the third sentence basically gives the background, somebody else has already done something along similar lines. So, one is Pauling and Corey's uh, um, suggestion. Uh, which is probably a three chain structure because another three chain structure they say in the next paragraph which is suggested by Fraser and then there is a sentence which says what is it that they are actually trying to do. We wish to put forward a radically different structure for the salt of deoxyribose nucleic acid and then the next paragraph actually starts with how their structure is. The structure is an open one and its water content is rather high. Okay. So, these are the first sentences of the first five paragraphs. You can write down all the sentences and look at the structure. So, 
somebody who is writing top down for example, would have written the paper in this fashion. They would have written these first sentences. Let us say in the first paragraph what we are doing, second paragraph let us describe Pauling and Corey, third paragraph let us describe Fraser, fourth paragraph let us say what we are doing, fifth paragraph let us describe the structure in greater detail and so on. So, this could be a structure for the paper. So, it is a good exercise for you. So, this is what I said when you are uh, reading technical material. So, there are two things, one is to get the information, the second one is to see how the information itself is communicated. So, this is the second level of reading that uh, you should do especially those papers which are considered as important in your area or which are considered as classics, you should try to do this exercise and see how the paper itself is structured. I mean, if this is the information, is this how I will present it or is there a better way of presenting this or why is it that the way they have presented is the best way or probably a very good way. So, this kind of analysis if you keep doing on material that you read, that is how you are writing will also improve. That is how you will also start thinking about the writing process itself at a uh, meta level. Okay. Now, there are a few tricky sentences in this paper. Okay. One of them is again uh, uh, the first sentence is one of the paragraphs towards the end and it says that it has not escaped our notice that the specific pairing we have postulated immediately suggest a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material. Okay. Of course, there is another paragraph towards the end, the, the, I think this is also a first sentence, it says full details of the structure including the conditions assumed in building it together with a set of coordinates for the atoms will be published elsewhere. So, in these two sentences, I have called them tricky sentences because what uh, Watson and Crick are trying to do is to lay claim to certain things. The first one is to lay the claim that they have not only got the structure, they think that their suggested structure will help explain how the genetic material is copied. You know, if they have not written this sentence, it is possible for somebody else to say that uh, Crick and Watson gave this structure and we have figured out that uh, that is a good structure for copying uh, genetic material. Okay. But by making this statement themselves, uh, they are basically claiming uh, credit for their discovery that not only they figured out the structure, but they figured out that the structure is significant for understanding the copying mechanism for the genetic material. The second one is of course, uh, that uh, it will be published elsewhere which says that which basically indicates to the audience that they have actually solved the problem. Uh, this is where uh, you know from where you leave and uh, sometimes we all do this maybe you have written this paper, maybe there is some other portion which you have already done. Uh, so, you do not want somebody else to waste their time doing that and sometimes you also want to get credit for thinking about it first and solving it first. In both these cases, you put sentences like this to let the audience know that you are continuing working on that and this is the amount of detail that you have figured out at this point and it will be published elsewhere. So, that people can just wait and whenever it is published, they can take a look at it or probably in these days, they can send you an email saying that you know we would like the preprint of what you are doing. The last tricky sentence from this paper is the one that I pointed out. They have indicated that they have benefited, but they have put it in such a way that the significance of the benefit that they have derived. Uh, is not completely uh, communicated. Okay. So, the, uh, the Dr. R. E. Franklin there is uh, Rosalind Franklin and there are people who believe that she also deserved the Nobel Prize uh, for this discovery. She is an experimentalist, she was extremely thorough with her experiments and she had a structure very similar to what uh, Watson and Crick published uh, and in fact, in the same nature, uh, uh, in the same issue there is a paper next to it which is about a DNA structure, some experimental results and the following paper is actually by Wilkins and Franklin and, and, and I think one more co-work. So, so, these are uh, sort of sentences one writes to, so all the three sentences that the tricky sentences that I have pointed out are uh, uh, ways in which uh, in, in academic community people claim credit for things that they are doing. Okay. So, sometimes it is needed or it becomes important or some sometimes people want to do this 
and uh, close reading of this kind of material will tell you what are the tricks that people use as well as when you are reading a paper you will understand what is it that people are trying to communicate these are information that are not communicated directly but are communicated indirectly by paying attention to or, or as they say reading between the lines you get some more information about what is being communicated okay so so these are the question what is the paragraph writing style of crick and watson and what is tricky about these tricky sentences. So, you can go back, I have only pointed out a few of these things and you can read the rest of the paper and do an analysis of the sentences and paragraphs and it is a very small paper, so it is easier to do it completely. Okay. Thank you.